If you're trying to get things done in Excel VBA, you are going to love season two of the Real World Example series. Let's get into it. This is the series where I take a real world example from a viewer of the channel, work through it step by step using Excel VBA to get it done at the click of a button. Thank you to Chaheen for sending in this example. You can see the email right here, but this is what we're trying to do. We've got two files that we're working with, an old file and a new file. We're looking to reconcile the data. So that new file of the entries in that file, how many of those entries appear in the original file. And we've also got a kind of product database to compare the data to. So are there any inaccuracies, inconsistencies between the data in the new file and the product database? So it's a typical real world example. So many people out there trying to get this kind of job done. We're going to get it done at the click of a button using Excel VBA. Now we've got three files we're working with, so don't get confused. Make sure you're working with the right file. We've got our old data file here. Then we've got our new data file here and the old data, new data, they look similar. So let's not get confused. And then we've got our product data file here. So make sure we've got all three files. Our general approach is going to be to build some code into the product data file that we can use with different versions of the new and old data file should the customer wish to do that. So it's kind of a flexible approach. So let's get it into the product data file and make sure that that's the active file. And then let's open the VBA editor. So Alt F11 shortcut on the Windows PC. And we can see straight away, we've got multiple files open. We've got to be careful where we're working. Make sure we're working in this product data file. So let's go ahead and insert a module. And we can see the module has appeared in the right place underneath this product data file. So we've got our module in there. What's the first thing we do when we put a module in? We say option explicit, option explicit at the top there. That of course is going to help us avoid spelling mistakes and things like that. So let's get started with this. Task. What do we do when we get started? Do we just jump into the code? Well, viewers of the channel will know we don't just jump into the code. What is the critical thing we need to do first? We need to do planning and conceptualization, which means pseudo code, which means writing out in English or in your native language how the code is going to work. It's a critical step to make the technical stuff much, much easier later. So we've got three files that we're working with. So first we want to identify, identify three files to work with. And we want to do things like make sure there's only three files open three files open. So as I'm talking, I'm making these notes. You can see these notes are appearing in green. That's because I'm putting an inverted comma in before the writing. That's making them annotations. They'll appear, appear in green. Excel will ignore them when Excel is executing the code. So identify the three files. Make sure the three files are open. How are we going to identify the files? Well, why don't we put a cell in in the spreadsheet to say, this is the file name that you want to work with. This is the new data file. This is the old data file. That's going to allow the user to really control which file, that the file that we're looking at. So let's say, identify the three files, finds old file name from spreadsheet, and then find new file name from spreadsheet. So in our product data file, we're going to have another sheet in here and we'll have a cell in there for the old file name, a cell in there for the new file name. So this is how it's going to work. And then if everything's OK, maybe we should uh, notify the user. OK to proceed. All files found. Or notify the user. Not OK to proceed. Not OK to proceed all files not found. So we've got some important communication uh, with the user here. How does communication with the user usually work? We can use a message box, of course, flash up a message box, tell the user what the situation is. Are we ready to continue with the macro? Are we not ready to continue with the macro? So now we've got to think, okay, we've found our files. How are we going to work through the files? I'm going to the new data here. Well, we want, we want to loop through this data, work down the data, and then ask those questions. Is this line of data 
in the other file and is the data accurate uh, does the information about this line of data conform with what's in the product database file so these are the kind of questions we've got to ask writing the pseudo code is all about making that clear in our minds what steps are we going through so back to the vba editor so let's first activate activate the old file and then we want to loop through all of the entries in the old file. In order to do that, uh, what's our approach going to be? You might want to stop the video and think about that. Loops are complicated, but we've got to tell Excel where the data is in the file. Where's the start point and where's the end point for the data? And it's advantageous at this point if we can use a dynamic approach, a dynamic, dynamic approach that's going to work with different size data sets. So let's say find data start point start point and then find data end point. So what's that going to be? Let's go to the old data file. So the start point is going to be here and the end point is going to be down at the bottom here. But we want to find those things in a dynamic way. And we're going to look at some really cool code to help us do this, which means the uh, routine will work for different size data sets. So let's say do this uh, dynamically dynamically so now we've defined the range we want to look at we can then set up the loop so let's say begin loop begin loop through entries and what do we do when we open a loop or open a conditional statement we've got to make sure we close it at the same time so already we can say end loop through entry so you can see how we're building up this code we want to get to a situation where we can translate each of these lines of code into a line of VBA, and that will get us a good amount of the way towards having this routine complete. So we've managed to loop through the entries. Then what questions do we want to ask? Well, we want to take this product number, compare it to the new data file here, and then does this product number appear in the new data file? So how are we going to do that? We're going to have to go through some steps. We actually want to uh, define the range of the new data as well. OK, so let's say for old data and new data files. So it sounds like we're going to have a few variables, some variables defining the data for the uh, old file, some variables defining the data for the for the new file. So begin loop through entries. Let's say take um, product code. So we're talking about column B here. Let's take the product code, maybe assign it to a variable and maybe we don't need to. Let's make the decision when we're, when we're you know, deep in the code and actually understanding how it's all working. Assign to a variable. So that's a possibility and let's say a question mark. And then does this product code appear in the product code range for the other file, uh, effectively here in the new data file. Does this product code appear in this range? So we can literally write that out. Does the product code appear in the range for the new data file? Okay. And let's make this a bit clearer. Be begin through loop through entries from old file. There we go. And just made that clear down here. Let's say old file here as well. So does a product appear in the range for the new data file? What mechanism are we going to use to do that? Do you know? I want to stop the video and think about that. So let's use application.worksheet function. So application.worksheet function allows us to call an Excel formula, a worksheet formula in the VBA editor. So we can harness all the power of those worksheet formulae in the VBA editor. And what particular formula are we looking at? Well, count if, count if allows us to count how many times a particular value appears in a range. What's our value going to be? Well, see if the product code, which we can say is the criteria, appears in the product range, product code range in the new file. Okay, I'm just going to put this across two lines, appears in the product code range for the new file. And I'm just going to put an underscore here, very geeky coder thing to do, put an underscore here to kind of show that that's across two lines. 
There we go. So this is going to be a tricky piece of code. Application.worksheet function calling that counter formula and then seeing if the product code appears in the file. Now, we've got different ways to go now. If the product code does appear in the file, we want to do one thing. If the product code doesn't appear in the file, we want to do something else. So let's say if the product code does not appear in the file, does not appear in the file, in the file, then we want to, here we go. I forgot to put my inverted comma in there. Could see the VBA editor keeping us on point there. If the product code does not appear in the file, well, how's it going to work? So we've got to think a little bit about the file structure of the product data file here. So it would be nice to have a sheet in this file that listed all of the products that appear in the new data, but not in the old data. And conversely, all of the products that appear in the old data, but not in the new data. So we're going to say if the product code does not appear in the new file, then we're going to say list it, list it, or let's say input it, put it on the uh, in old, in old, but not in new, in new sheet. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So maybe this is not absolutely perfect, you know, not absolutely step by step, literally, but it's really important to work through the logic, work through these concepts. OK, so if the product code does not appear in the new file, we're going to input it on the in old or in in old, not in new sheets. There we go. And then how are we going to do this? Well, we're sending the code one of two ways. So we need conditional statements. Statement does the code appear or not as in the product code of course and what do we do when we open a conditional statement yes we need to close it as well and just going to copy paste this down here and then let's say close conditional statement does the product code appear here or not okay and if it does not appear then we're listing it here then if product code does appear then we're going to list it somewhere else. I've got my inverted comma again. And then let's say uh, input it on the in both sheets. There we go, sheet. Yeah, so as we're going through this, you know, I never do a huge amount of preparation, but that's not because I'm lazy, although I am a little bit lazy, but it's because I want to see how I, I want you to see how I would actually work through this. And it's kind of taking shape in my mind as I'm working through it. So I can see that we're going to have a few sheets in this file, in the product database file. Remember, this is where our code is going to reside. This is where our code is going to live. And one of those sheets is going to have three sheets, I think. One entry, one with entries that are in the new, not in the old. One with entries in the old, not in the new. One with entries that are in both. So I think that's going to be the overall structure there. So that's what we're going to present to the client once this routine is complete. You know, three sheets, um, these sheets, yeah, three sheets falling into three categories that I've already explained. I won't explain those again. And finally, we do need to do a check. Check is additional information is additional data accurate and let's say check against product database so here remember we've got our product database here and part, part of our briefing is to check the information in the data files the information across here so we've got the sku the description and the size checking those date data items against what they should be in the product database and then just flagging up any issues flagging up any issues there so how are we going to do that um well we've got to check check three pieces of data here it's gonna be quite a long routine as we can see so maybe loop through three pieces of data of data okay check against product database okay and then if data does not appear if data is not consistent let's say then let's just highlight that let's just put some uh some background fill on there to highlight it with background fill Okay, so in order to do this, well, we're going to have to establish the position in the database. 
establish the position in the database of the product code that we're looking at. How might we do that? Again, stop the video. So if we're looking to establish position, looking to establish position, then what formula would allow us to do that? Well, the match formula counts across a range and tells us um, how far across a range a particular value appears. Establish position in database using match and application.worksheet function. I'm just going to say WS uh, function in there. Okay, and then, yeah. So I think we've got the main features of the code there. You know, that's a good level of detail for me. We want to be working through the code, doing that conceptual understanding, working on our conceptual understanding. What are the main uh, steps that we're going through? And hopefully we can get to a level where one annotation, one line, uh, annotated line here equates to one line of VBA. You know, in some places we've managed to get to that detail. In others, we haven't quite got there, but you know, that doesn't matter. What's important is we're thinking about the concepts, you know, where are the loops, where are the conditional statements, where are the application.worksheet functions, building a picture in our mind of how it's all going to work. That's going to help us avoid those big technical problems later. So that's our planning and conceptualization, something people often ignore. But what I find is when people are having problems with VBA code, you know, they might call me in to fix something for them. It's rarely the technical thing that's problematic. It's it's more often that conceptual understanding. They haven't got a clear idea in their own heads how things are actually going to work. So it's super important to us. In the next video, we're going to start with our coding. Now we've got an idea in our mind how it's going to work. I'll see you in the next video.